Welcome back, scientists, to part two of our lesson today, chapter two, lesson four. We'll spend the next part of our lesson doing a little bit of reading. When a trait makes it easier for an organism to survive in its environment, scientists say that that trait is adaptive. Now repeat that word out loud to yourself right here in this moment, adaptive. When a trait makes it harder for an organism to survive in its environment, that trait is non-adaptive. Okay, so remember the dark brown fur made it easier for the pocket mice to survive in the environment with dark colored volcanic rock. So dark brown fur is an adaptive trait in the environment. Pale tan fur is non-adaptive in the volcanic rock environment because it makes it harder for the mice to survive there. Let's look back at our biomimicry handbook to find out a little bit more about the adaptive traits and why they are important. Remember, biomimicry engineers are often interested in the traits that make it easier for organisms to meet their needs and survive, adaptive traits. Learning about these traits can give biomimicry engineers you ideas for designs that you can use to make uh, to, that will solve problems. As biomimicry engineers, you'll use ideas from organisms to make your own designs later in the unit. I'll read these next few pages. Follow along as I read aloud and remember you can always pause the video to take notes, keep records like a scientist, write down vocabulary, or draw a picture. What are adaptive traits? In biomimicry, engineers study the traits of organisms to get ideas for their designs. Usually engineers study adaptive traits. An adaptive trait is a trait that makes it easier for an organism to survive in its environment. Some adaptive traits make it easier for organisms to get what they need, things like water, food, or sunlight. Other adaptive traits help keep organisms from being eaten. For example, these traits may help them hide, protect themselves, or get away from predators. Down below you see a picture of the flowers and the um, blurb underneath it, it says, the sharp spines on this plant help keep animals from eating it. Having spines is an adaptive trait for this plant. And over by the birds it says, the beak shape of these birds is an adaptive trait. It makes it easier for them to get food in their environment. To know whether a trait is adaptive or not, you have to know about the environment where an organism lives. For example, let's imagine mice living in a sandy desert environment. Some of the mice have pale tan fur, the color of sand. Having sand color fur is an adaptive trait in a sandy environment. It makes it easier for a mouse to hide from predators. And there you can see this mouse's color helps it hide in a desert environment. However, other mice that live in this environment have dark brown fur. The dark brown fur, I'll move myself so you can see a little better. The dark brown fur stands out against the pale sand. It is easier for predators to see the brown mice. In this environment, dark brown fur is a non-adaptive trait. Mice with this trait are less likely to survive because predators are more likely to catch them. Non-adaptive traits make it harder to survive in an environment. And down below it says, which one of these mice would be easier for a predator to see in a sandy environment? And I bet you guessed the one at the bottom. Let's look back for a minute at page nine. It says, which trait for fur color, dark brown or pale tan, is an adaptive trait for these mice in the sandy environment? Adaptive means which one helps it survive. So that's right, if you guessed it, pale tan fur. In our model, dark brown fur was an adaptive trait and pale tan fur was a non-adaptive trait. How can that be? What do you remember about why that is? Definitely pause now to write or draw your answer. Now, if you remember back, the environment that the mouse was in is different. The environment we looked at had dark lava rock instead of light sand. Different color fur helps mice blend into different environments. So, 
we need to know what the environment in which an organism lives is in order to know if a trait is adaptive or makes it easier for an organism to meet its needs in that environment. Here's a thinking question for you. Is it just mice that have adaptive and non-adaptive traits? Are there other organisms that have adaptive and non-adaptive traits? Remember, pause for some thinking time. You can also put your ideas on paper or say them to someone or something near you. Here are our vocabulary words for today. Adaptive, making it easier for an organism to meet its needs in an environment. And non-adaptive, making it harder for an organism to meet its needs in an environment. Here's the last part of our lesson. As biomimicry engineers, you can use your observations of an organism's traits to inspire ideas for your designs. Now we'll get a chance to think about our own ideas for designs based on traits. These are pages 36 and 37 from your biomimicry handbook. It says here, traits to give you ideas. Observe these traits. Do any of them give you ideas for your own biomimicry designs? Remember, you're trying to create something that could mimic or copy life. So, if you look through all of these, this is your lesson challenge for today. Choose one picture from here of an organism's trait that you can see. What ideas does it give you for something that you could design? Draw, write, or tell your answer to someone near you before our next lesson. You did a great job today. I will see you next time in chapter two, lesson five.